Imagine you're a hiring manager that has an open position to fill and you have two candidates on your interview list. You're interviewing the first one and he has a long list of courses and certificates and he's eager to talk about all the details of them. Every question you ask, he answers with a lot of theory and an almost perfect answer. It's impressive, right? Then you interview the second candidate and even though she is familiar with all the same courses, she has never really paid attention to them and never even completed one. Instead, she speaks the whole interview passionately about her personal projects, the challenges she has faced and the innovative solutions she has come up with. Now, who would you hire? Of course, you don't have enough information and it's very difficult to make a hiring decision. But I think your gut feeling tells you to hire the second person, right? The second candidate has given you undeniable evidence that they can learn something from the ground up, that they don't only consume knowledge, but they can use it and apply it somewhere. They build something, they troubleshoot, they overcome obstacles, and they really learn something from the ground up. She has likely encountered and overcome more problems than a theoretical course could throw at you. Getting a deep understanding and a form of resilience along the way. This is the core of this video. While I think that theoretical courses have their value, there is something unique about the playful learning and diving into a problem first and then learning it while you're doing it. I think now is the best time to get started with personal projects because we have powerful tools like ChatGPT that can help us to get started. And in the end of this video, I will include some of the prompts I have found incredibly useful to get started. To start off, I want to talk about the limitations of formal courses. I think they are providing a structure, a form of comfort because you don't really need to take the decisions along the way what you want to learn. You're just following along, consuming a course. While that is, as I said, very comfortable, it also removes a bit of the friction and the questions why you are learning something. Sometimes it's not really clear why you need it. And during a course, you're just continuing building this knowledge, but you're not properly applying it, even though some courses have practical examples in them. There's really a difference between doing something to obtain a certificate, like grinding through a course, or actually having a real world problem where you're excited about solving it. Building something also teaches you a lot of the things you know, because you need to learn it, but you actually learn it with a different premise, with a different motivation. This is, for example, a common thing I've seen when hiring people fresh out of university. They have a lot of theoretical knowledge on the math, on the algorithms, on programming, but when it comes to actually writing software, delivering it, testing it, and actually seeing the value that it creates, they are missing a lot of steps in between. You don't Maybe you don't even learn Git or how to collaborate with other people. And I think in a personal project where you need to figure out problems on your own, where you maybe need to go on a forum or a website and ask a question, that has a different character and you learn how to actually build something and deliver it in the end. This leads me to the second point I want to talk about, which is the power of self-learning. I think if you have a playful approach and if you are learning something out of your own curiosity, not because you need to complete a course, but you learn it on your own, it almost doesn't feel like learning. I don't know if you also had these experiences where you're just so excited about something that you're just doing it and you don't even notice that you're learning. You just do it because you want to do it. Because often those courses, they guide you through a solution and feed you the information bit by bit. But I think some of the real learning happens when you encounter a problem, you get stuck for maybe a full day and you don't really know what is going on. In these moments, you have to overcome this feeling of not knowing and not even knowing where to continue. And you learn much more. You build a form of resilience of sticking with the problem and deeply solving it. And later in the job life, there's also no course or often there's no real solution to what you're building. So you need to be able to stick with a problem and actually try to solve it, sometimes over multiple days. And this is what self-learning teaches you, whereas a course is more smooth and you don't really have this friction in the learning process. And another thing I am thinking a lot about is the fear of failure. In a course, there is no real opportunity for you to fail. You just complete all the steps and then you're done. Almost everyone can do that. But when I'm as a hiring manager assessing people and they tell me, yeah, I had this idea and I tried it out and maybe they failed or maybe they got to somewhere else even. I see that they took on the risk and they were not afraid of failing and adapting along the way. 
And this is a quality we hiring managers always look for and it's much more important than just being able to complete a course which almost everyone can do. Talking about the results of both approaches, when you're mainly focusing on courses and you're completing certificate after certificate, you end up with a long list of certificates that have nothing really to do with you. Almost anyone can have them and as a hiring manager I always found that this is a bit boring, it doesn't really tell me anything about you. If, on the other hand, you completed a lot of projects, I am curious and I will ask you about it during the interview. And this is usually the time where their eyes light up, they get excited and you can really talk about all the details of your project. Because you encountered all those problems that you can share with me and all the solutions you came up with, which is much more meaningful than just saying, yeah, I have this AWS or Azure certificate. Also, I think with the self-learning approach, you are preparing yourself much better for the future. Because during working as a software engineer or in tech in general, you constantly need to learn new things. There's constantly a new tool, a technology, a new problem, maybe a new product you're building. And this process of self-learning then seamlessly integrates into your daily work. Whereas doing courses, you almost need to take time apart from your work. You go to your manager and you say like, hey, can I have one day a week to work on this course? Whereas the self-learning technique happens naturally. And you're just solving the problem, learning while doing it. Now coming to the advice I wanted to give on how to get started. I know, it's always very difficult to come up with something. And if you decide that you want to build your own projects, the first experience you will have is you're sitting in front of the blinking cursor, no idea what to do. I want to give you a few examples that maybe inspire you to think about problems in your life or problems you see out there that you might want to fix. The first option is of course to fix or build something you want in your private life. That can be something like a small game or some home automation. Sometimes you think, oh, if I could just tie the lights to a sensor, that would be cool. Build that. Things I've also built in the past was for example, when the translation tools got better, I was super excited about the idea of building a chat where if you write a message in your native language and someone else has a different language, it automatically translates the message and they receive the message in their native language. And I've just sat there with a friend together and we've built that and it was a lot of fun. We learned a lot about app development, calling APIs, building all these integrations and the UI and so on. And that was a lot of fun. Or when blockchains and cryptography went so big, I was like, I bet I can make some money and trade automatically with a bot I write. And I dove headfirst into all the trading algorithms, into statistical analysis of charts and learned about all the APIs. And I actually built a bot that could trade cryptocurrencies for me. No, I didn't make any money. I actually lost money. But I learned so much along the way and it was so much fun. And another example is back then when GDPR came out and that's something very European or maybe even German. We love all our rules and laws. A lot of website owners couldn't really comply with all the rules. And we thought, can we just crawl the websites and find all the mistakes and we built that. Or sometimes you just have an idea for a small app, maybe for fitness or journaling or meditation. And sure, you can just download an app from the app store. There's probably an app for that out there, but you could also just build it for yourself and Maybe you're onto something and you publish it and other people also like it. With that, you can really build your portfolio and show and talk about something during the interview. Those were just my examples. But a lot of times you can just start with a website or a small app for your local football club or tennis club. They always need some system to keep track of their members. And if you have some personal connections, you can just ask them, hey, can I build that for you? Maybe even for free to get started in software development. Another thing is if building something from scratch, from the ground up is too much for you, you could also look into open source projects. A lot of times when you're developing, you're doing NPM install or you're pulling a lot of packages in, most of them are open source and need contributors like you to fix something. And this is much less intimidating than it sounds because a lot of times you can just start with something small. Maybe you find a small bug or there's a translation issue or there's some small thing you can get started with. There are also tons of examples online how to get started there. This is also a great way to learn how to read code, to understand it, and then to contribute something meaningful to it. And in an interview, there's almost nothing better than to say, hey, I 
contribute to open source. Every hiring manager loves that. But getting started on your own is intimidating. And if you don't know how to get started, you could also see if there are some local meetups or hackathons you can join, where you can find a much more constrained problem. And they say, hey, this is what to focus on maybe over this day or over this weekend. And you could start building stuff there. And the result of such a hackathon is also always good to present in an interview. When building something on your own, I have to warn you, try to set the smallest possible goal. Because a lot of times we think about something we want to solve and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and all of a sudden you need a backend and a database and why not put it in the cloud? And I speak here from experience. I've built so many projects where they over time grew too big and I just lost interest and it kind of overwhelmed me. And here it is crucial that you try to set a small achievable goal and finish that before you add new features to it. Now coming to the best parts I promised earlier. Now is the best time to get started because you can just use ChatGPT to get help while initiating a project. And I found extremely useful prompts that help you get started. I will leave in a document under this video. They will probably look a bit different once you watch this video, but I want to show you an example how that might look like. If you really don't know how to get started at all, you can also use ChatGPT to give you a structured plan on how to get started. The first prompt I have in my document is doing exactly that. It helps you to come up with a structured study plan tailored perfectly to you. But I think an even more exciting approach is if you already know a bit of programming and you have done a few tutorials and now you want to build something real, you can use ChatGPT to guide you as a mentor through the initial steps of your project. And I've also included a prompt for that. And looking at this example, you see it should assume the role of a programming mentor task to guide you through the initial development of a personal project. And I've added here a project idea description where you briefly describe your project idea. I've added uh, preferred technologies. Maybe you already know what stack you want to use. Maybe you want to use Node.js and JavaScript or Python and libraries attached to that. You can add it here. And in the end, you can also add your current skill level. You can describe your current programming skill and relevant experience to it so that ChatGPT knows to tailor it a bit to what you already know. And then the prompt continues with, given these details, please suggest an appropriate technical stack, outline the initial steps, provide a step-by-step -step guide, and recommend resources for learning more about the technologies involved. Especially if they're new to me, if you didn't mention them earlier in the prompt. And it should also offer advice on the approach and challenges and maybe the debugging of the different stages of development. And if we run this prompt as an example, saying that I want an app that controlled my lights at home, I would like to use a JavaScript based stack and I'm a beginner that knows some JavaScript fundamentals and run it once, we get the following answer. It repeats your prompt and what it will answer. And at first it suggests a technical stack. It says the front end should be React, back end could be Node.js. For the database, it suggests MongoDB and for the communication with the lights, it suggests MQTT. And then it continues with the initial setup steps. It describes the development environment, the code editor, maybe you want to use VS Code, the version control system. And following that, there's a step-by-step -step guide to get started. Initialize the new project, set up the backend, set up the front end, getting started with MQTT, and then to code the foundational elements of the backend server, the front end, and also with the protocol to connect to your lights. And it also recommends you some resources you can learn more about and how you could approach challenges and the debugging of it. The absolute best thing about it is that this is not some kind of website or article someone has written and you now need to deal with it, encountering problems over problems. You can now get started and use this chat as your personal mentor. And if you're getting started with the first steps and you get stuck, you can just copy and paste the error message into here and say like, hey, I tried to follow your step-by-step -step guide, but I get stuck here. Can you explain this to me? And you will be amazed how good it is to help you throughout these challenges. And before you think, you have a running app where you can build on top of it and use it as your first initial project. Those were just two examples of prompts that you can use to get started with your own personal projects. I hope this video motivated you to maybe not start another course, but to start with your own personal projects. If you have any questions or maybe even ideas how people can get started or additions to my prompts, write them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.